What's up guys? So today I am making an update video for you because there's a lot of things going on and I need to fill you guys in. Let me just say that if you follow my Instagram and my Twitter, you will hear about this stuff long before you see it in a video, simply because it takes a long time to film, edit, and upload a video. And I don't always have time to do that, but I always, always try to upload things on my Instagram and Twitter pages um, as they happen. So those people get stuff weeks sometimes in advance to me actually making a video on YouTube for it. Behind me, you see that I have powder coating equipment and a headlight here, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, but I made posts of this stuff like a week ago. Now, another thing I wanted to mention really quick is wheelwell.com. Wheelwell was kind enough to feature my car this week as part of their Inside the Build series. Now, Inside the Build is a great way for people to share the backstories of their car. It covers your story, how you got the car, things like that, as well as modifications and even future plans. So if you are curious about the backstory behind Aurora or are interested in my future plans, I highly encourage you to take a few seconds and click the link below and check out wheelwell.com. Everything is right there about my car. So I will be making videos in the future talking about the backstory of my car as well as future plans and whatnot. But right now, everything is right there on that website. I typed it up myself, so check it out. That being said, if you are watching this video in the future and it is past this time and my car is no longer featured, you could probably still click the link below and it will take you to somebody else's build. Everybody on that site um, has the opportunity to have their build featured. All they have to do is fill out an application and submit it. So even if my car isn't featured, I'm sure it's something awesome because Willwell features a different car every week. So. If you're still interested in Willwell or Curious, I encourage you to check out the link below. The next thing I wanna update you on is my STI. Now, I just got my car back the other day, again, from more performance, because my wheel bearing started to fail. In fact, when they took it apart, they said that the only thing holding it together was the hub itself. Now, I'm mentioning that because, firstly, I know it seems like my car is always breaking, but it's just the nature of having a high mileage, older car. My car is 10 years old, has 155,000 miles on it at this point, so things naturally fail. And I know that seems like common sense, but for some reason that doesn't seem to get across to a lot of people. So I'm not here to bash Subaru or bash my car and say it's junk. It's not. It's just the nature of having a high mileage car. Things are going to wear out, things are going to fail, things are going to break. And I'm mentioning that to be clear and thorough with you guys. I have a lot of people who ask about buying older cars, buying older Subarus. And I love those questions, I love answering them. One of the things that I always tell those people is be prepared for maintenance costs. There are a lot of things to break on a car and as it ages, those things are more likely to break. So if you are going to buy an older car or one that's high mileage, just be prepared for the unexpected. Expect things to break because, you know, my wheel bearing was fine two, three weeks ago and then it starts making a noise and there you have it. I have to spend $700 for a new wheel bearing and hub and labor and things like that. The second reason I mentioned that is because if you watch any of my videos pretty much, um, More Performance is my go-to shop and that is for a couple reasons. Yes, they're convenient, but they are also one of the best Subaru shops I've ever dealt with. And in my opinion, they are the best in at least the Pittsburgh area, if not the state or East Coast hands down without a doubt. I've been dealing with more performance for over a year at this point and they always give great service and are very kind and courteous. They get my car in, get me fixed and get me on the road. No, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not getting any kickbacks from them. <laughs> when my car breaks, I pay full price just like everybody else. So I'm not being paid by them or sponsored by them. However, however, I have it on good authority that you might be seeing a little bit more of more performance. I don't want to give I don't want to give you too much right now because things are still in the works. But uh, a little birdie told me that they're working on some cool stuff, and I'm working on some cool stuff. I also want to mention that More Performance is not only a performance shop. In fact, their full name is More Performance and Parts because they sell and fabricate parts as well. I'm not going to disclose much more than that right now, but. Stay tuned, I think you're gonna be interested. If you're not subscribed and you're interested in more performance, subscribe because we have stuff coming, don't worry about it. So with that out of the way, I can actually get to talking about the stuff behind me. Let me start with this headlight right here. If you watch my future modifications video, you will see that my headlight is heavily, heavily oxidized and it also has cracks in the lens. So 
I picked up this replacement off of eBay. Now, I'm not only going to do an install video on this, but I will have to separate it because unfortunately, this headlight that they sent me is not what was in the description. Uh, the item I bid on actually has the mounting tab right here. And I got this with no mounting tab in the box. So they sent me the wrong headlight, unfortunately. I do have a good headlight on my car with a good bracket on it. So I will have to separate the lens off of this headlight and swap it onto that. Also, the electrical harness here has a few cracks in the connectors here. And I believe this piece right here is broken. So I'm going to use the wiring harness off of the headlight that's in my car. That's good for you. It's just a little bit more work for me. If you're curious on how to take apart a headlight and bake it and put it back together, you should subscribe if you're not already because I have a video coming out on that. Other than that, this stuff here is all my powder coating stuff, which I am very, very excited about because that means that I will be able to powder coat stuff myself in this garage. So I picked up all this stuff from Eastwood because Eastwood is a solid, reputable company who makes top quality products and they stand behind their work. So I have my dual voltage powder coating gun. This is their premier model. Um, and it allows you to run a little bit more voltage for bigger parts. And it will basically allow me to get a more even coating on things like brake calipers or intake manifolds, things like that. So this is a little bit more expensive than their standard model, but I definitely recommend it. And I also got powder coating polish, which will allow me to polish up things if I need to or resurface a little bit. Uh, powder coating is smooth depending on the um, powder that you get and the finish that you get, but this will help take out some very small blemishes or scratches. I also have decoat, which I hope is strong enough to take off the powder coat on my brake calipers when I do those. And it came with uh, a powder coating. This is just black powder coating powder. And this is part of the accessories kit that I got. I have some high temp masking tape and whatnot, silicone plugs. I also picked up this Ryobi infrared thermometer that goes up to 600 degrees, which is all I need. And I have a mask, of course. So I need to pick up some other powders, probably from Prismatic Powders, because they make awesome, awesome psychedelic colors and other cool stuff. So I have powders from them that I need to order. Now behind me, I have an electric powder coating oven, which I've also picked up from Eastwood. I believe it was $80 or so. It is very important when you're powder coating to have a dedicated oven that is electric, that is dedicated to only powder coating. When you powder coat, you are baking the powder, which turns into a plastic basically. And there are chemicals that are given off that will never go away. So you cannot powder coat in an oven and then cook in it because you'll probably get sick and die, like really. So I know there are toaster ovens that some guys get because it's cheaper. That's cool and all. I went with this. It's actually made for powder coating. So this is really intended for powder coating and it's much easier to use when you're trying to powder coat stuff than, you know, rigging up a toaster oven. Not to say a toaster oven wouldn't work. I will be setting all this stuff up and I'll make you guys a video on that. I'm going to start powder coating things fairly soon. I need to get good enough to powder coat my shift knob and later on my brake calipers, which I'm very nervous about, even though I do know how to do it. But I need some practice, so I will be setting this stuff up and practicing. Now behind me here, I have these dust and pollen filters, which are 20 by 20. Uh, they were like five bucks at Home Depot, but I'm going to use these along with the box fan in the next room, which I'm gonna bring in here, and this wardrobe box from also from Home Depot. Uh, to set up a makeshift powder coating booth. The idea is I'm going to put this wardrobe box together and cut out the front so I have access as well as cut out the back so that I could fit these filters and the fan. So as I'm powder coating, you know, if you've never seen powder coating before, you have powder that basically goes everywhere. So I'm gonna have the fan in the back of this booth blowing out, sucking air through so that all this extra powder, instead of just floating around wherever, it's going to get trapped in these filters and it will help keep things neat. So I will make a video on all this setup and all that stuff in the future, so stay tuned for that. Some of you guys have been wondering, where is the rear diffuser video? For those of you who don't know, um, I made a teaser video talking about Secret Scroll Project a while back and I was kind of trying to tease that out and make it a surprise, but the cat is out of the bag. It That video is going to be a DIY how to build a rear diffuser. 
I've had my rear diffuser on my car for about two years now and it is still holding strong with no real issues. And it's a great budget option. So I definitely will be making a video showing you how I built mine. So I'm gonna close out this video right here and right now. Before I go, I ask that if you're interested in the backstory behind Aurora, my STI, that you check out willwell.com, specifically the Inside the Build series, or I also have a brand page, which is Hawkeye STI Guy. So go on there, search that, and you should find my brand page. Secondly, if you're looking for performance parts, you should probably look at moreperformance.com. I don't care if you buy from them, just see what they have, because like I said, they have blast plates, which are unique, and as far as I know, nobody else makes those. So they do have some really unique solutions to Subarus um, that you'd probably wanna check out. So please check out more performance. I do have more stuff coming from them on the way. Lastly, I wanna say follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want, but I wanna give a shout out to TJ Hunt and his clothing brand, The Hunt & Company, for featuring me in a picture that they uploaded recently, helping them launch their new brand, their new season. And uh, that helped me launch past 1,000 followers, which was awesome. So for those of you who are following my goals, my goal is to reach 2,000 followers on Instagram by the end of the year. And right now I am at 1,030. So I have a couple months to get that done and I think I can do it. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thank you for the support. Thank you for subscribing. So. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below, or you can message me here, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. I try to reply to everybody. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. I normally have the seatbelt warning feature turned off because it's annoying as hell. And I always wear my seatbelt when I'm driving anyhow, but it just goes on and on and on and on and on all the time.